Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me as we continue our series titled Practicing His Presence. But before we begin, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you just thanking you for each and every person under the sound of my voice who's decided to join us and just feast upon your word. I thank you, Father, that they've given of their time, which means they've given of their life to do so. And I just appreciate that not one of them will leave the same as they came in the name of Jesus. I make myself available to be used by you to meet the needs of your people. I thank you that you will think through my mind, that you will speak through my lips as an oracle and every single action that I perform and word that I speak may it be pleasing in your sight, bringing honor and glory to your kingdom. And I covenant in advance to give to you and you alone all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Well, this is going to be the conclusion of this series. Now, I hope that you have received encouragement from the scriptures and the content provided. And I'm led to share a portion of my testimony that I pray will be a blessing to you. Because once again, I cannot ever talk about anyone else, but I can definitely talk about myself. Um, because this way you won't get upset with anything that, that you know, I have to share. Um, you hear me say often that everyone has their own unique story to tell. And this is simply a portion of mine. 43 years ago, I heard a verse of scripture. It's actually 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and the 26th verse. And it says, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Now, that was the very first time I ever heard that. And it truly caught my attention because I loved God with my whole heart to the best of my ability, but being authentic, which is the only way I know how to be, I was still grappling with anger that was reserved just for him. You see, my mother transitioned and went to be with the Lord when I was only 15 years old. I loved her with everything that I understood love to be. And I just could not understand why her life was being cut so short. I felt robbed. I don't know if anyone's ever experienced anything like that. So that's how I felt. I felt robbed. And since I grew up in the Baptist church, it was interesting because even though in the Baptist church, you can end up being there all day into the evening, you know, worshiping the Lord, loving the Lord, some of the best music you ever heard. It's just wonderful. However, they didn't teach the word. So I was given the impression that God decided to take my mother from our family and add her to another flower in God's heavenly garden. I mean, at least that's what they said at the funeral, because that's what they called them in the Baptist church, the funeral or memorial, however you want to say it, that's what they said. They also said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away and that I was supposed to bless the name of the Lord. Now, I decided to just continue loving God, but I still did not understand why he chose to take my mother. So when I heard that death was an enemy, my journey into scripture totally changed. What I did not realize at the time was my entire life was about to change forever. Like countless numbers of people, 
I turned on the television each week and became a student of the word in the classroom of Dr. Frederick Casey Price. It was at one of his crusades that I was born again and spirit filled. Until then, I didn't even know that I wasn't saved. I had spent many years being preached to and entertained each Sunday without being taught the uncompromising word of God. The teaching ministry of Dr. Price and his wife, Dr. Betty, taught me how to be a better wife, mother, and disciple of Christ. And I'm going to get through this message, and I am not going to cry through the whole thing. Why? Because I'm practicing his presence. Without them, I can only imagine how my husband, Stan, and I would have reared our family because of their teaching and contemporary examples, our lives, our children, and our grandchildren have been eternally blessed. I have always considered it an honor, as well as a privilege, to serve in the ministry, following the teaching of Apostle Price as he followed Christ. Now, please let me be clear about the fact that you may hear me refer to Apostle Price as Dr. Price. There is absolutely no disrespect in simply stating doctor instead of apostle. However, I am speaking of the same person who has always been more concerned with whose he is than a mere title. Have you ever had a circumstance in your life that just totally floored you, so to speak? You just it just wasn't anything that you ever expected? Well, on February 21st, 2021, that happened to me. This is the day that the apostle transitioned and went to be with the Lord. I was devastated. I cannot adequately explain how I felt. In some ways, I felt like a child who looked up to their father like their hero, a person who was superhuman, who would never leave them. Dr. Price was that person to me. He, he had so much faith and was a teacher like none other. Deep in my heart, I expected him to remain in the earth realm until the Trump sounds. I cannot dwell on that day because I need to share what happened moving forward to be helpful. I was so sad that I couldn't talk about it. I, <laughs> I just couldn't talk about how I felt. I knew that I needed to comfort the first family because, I mean, after all, I could only imagine the pain that they felt in their lives from their loss. Now, of course, as Christians, everyone knew to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I understood that the apostle was in no discomfort and in a far better place. I felt guilty because how dare I be so hurt? I had no answer. I just knew that my feelings were abysmal and I had to make a mid-course correction. I couldn't even talk to my husband Stan about how I was feeling. To say that I was depressed <laughs> was an understatement. However, we were in the middle of the pandemic. Just like everyone else, I was locked in dealing with my feelings. Of course, the enemy was forever present, <laughs> presenting thoughts, ideas, and suggestions that were not helpful. And trust me, I was entering into that why me phase, which works very, very well with depression. 
an interesting thing that happened that I really couldn't explain. This was different for me because as I mentioned, my mother transitioned when I was 15. My father transitioned on 9-11, not because of the World Trade Center. That was just the day that he transitioned. And I always said he just picked a day that all of us would never forget. But even with them, and, and it really bothered me, no question. Those were my parents who I loved. It didn't it was different with the apostle because with him, I couldn't look at any photos or listen to any of his recorded teachings without just breaking down in tears. It was as if my heart was just breaking apart and that just made no sense to me. I couldn't understand it. The only thing that I could figure out was, you see, his teaching completely changed my life. It taught me that I could live. It taught me that I didn't have to be broke. I didn't have to be insecure. I didn't have to be someone with nothing to give. He opened up the word and made it alive and real and it made all of the difference in my life it truly truly did and for that i will always be indebted to him i will always love him i still in my own mind see him in the present tense because i know he's present with the lord and i just i will always always love him so he was in a way i guess you could say Another parent for me. <laughs> Maybe God knew I needed two sets of parents. I don't know. But it was just different because up until probably not that long ago, maybe six months ago, I literally could not look at any pictures and I couldn't stand to hear his voice. I just would just cry, just fall apart. But... That's changed. And that is why I wanted to share all of this with you. Because a lot happened. I thought of the last conversation I had with the Apostle, which was in October of 2019. And I will treasure those words forever. But I also thought of all the things I didn't say. And this should remind all of us that tomorrow is not promised. And each day is precious, and we should make it a point to let those we love know how we feel. It is best not to have any regrets. Now, I recognize that Dr. Price was, like I said, another parent for me, and so was Dr. Betty. It is because of a lesson that she taught in the Faith Dome shortly after, shortly after the apostle transition that helped me tremendously because she explained quite a bit about his state of mind. And it really actually, and that he was really ready to leave. He was fine with leaving. And that was a blessing for me to hear. Now, Dr. Betty is absolutely amazing. That's the only word I can think to describe her. She is just amazing. And I continue to follow her as she follows Christ, and I remain honored to do so. Now, as I continued dealing with this challenging time, I wondered what Dr. Price would tell me to do. <laughs> now, I didn't have to think but a minute or two, because I knew that he would direct me to the Word of God, because I had been taught by his example that the word is the final authority. So with that said, this series, Practicing His Presence, began. I knew that I needed to rely on the Godhead within me to shake off the deep depression I was in. So I had a little talk with Jesus and told him about my troubles. Now, some of you may recognize that sentence. It's actually a lyric from a song years ago 
uh, have a little talk with Jesus. And I've always been one that appreciated the music ministry. And that was a song that I remembered as a child. And the Holy Spirit brought it back to my remembrance. And it just reminded me to do just that. Talk to Jesus. Well, let me be clear. I have nothing against therapists. And I strongly suggest, excuse me, that you take advantage of their expertise for your mental health just as you would another therapist for, you know, a different health challenge. In my case, amid the pandemic, I could not think of a therapist, and to be quite frank, many of them just were not readily available. So I chose the Godhead within me. I shared quite a bit of scripture through this series, throughout the whole entire series. It's filled with a lot of scripture, all of which I found helpful moving forward. I learned to start each day practicing his presence by asking God what he wanted me to do right then. I continued to the point of talking to the Godhead during the day and inviting him to guide me with every step that I take. Now, practicing his presence is what healed me from the darkness of depression and reminded me of the importance of the light, joy, peace, and love found in his presence. There are certain scriptures that helped me tremendously and always will because, as you know, the word is forever pregnant. I share them with you now and hope that they bless you too. Turn with me to John's Gospel, the 17th chapter. Now, this particular chapter in the Bible has always been one of my absolute favorites because to me, it truly displays and shows for us the character, the intimate, yeah, character of Jesus. It truly does, for me at least, and I, I'm hoping that it does for you. So I'm going to share it with you out of the Amplified. Um, jot it down. You can follow along if you'd like, but I really want you to just listen to it. This is John 17 out of the Amplified, and this is Jesus actually praying to the Father, starting with verse 17. When Jesus had spoken these things, he raised his eyes to heaven, in prayer and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you, just as you have given him power and authority over all mankind. Now glorify him so that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him to be his permanently and forever. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true, supreme, and sovereign God, and in the same matter know Jesus as the Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you down here on the earth, and by completing the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory and majesty that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name and revealed your very self, your real self, to the people whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept and obeyed your word. Now, at last, they know with confident assurance that all you have given me is from you. It is really and truly yours. For the words which you gave me, I have given them, and they received and accepted them, and truly understood with confident assurance that I came from you, from your presence, and they believed without any doubt that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you, and all things that are mine are yours. And all things that are yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. 
I am no longer in the world, yet they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, so they may be one, just as we are. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them and protected them, and not one of them was lost except the son of destruction, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may experience my joy made full and complete and perfect within them, filling their hearts with my delight. I have given to them your word, the message you gave me, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world and do not belong to the world, just as I am not of the world and do not belong to it. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but that you keep them and protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart for your purposes. Make them holy. Your word is truth. Just as you commissioned and sent me into the world, I also have commissioned and sent them, believers, into the world. For their sake, sanctify myself to do your will, so that they also may be sanctified, set apart, dedicated, made holy in your truth. I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one, just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected and completed into one, so that the world may know without any doubt that you sent me, that you have loved them just as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given to me as your gift to me, may be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, just and righteous Father, Although the world has not known you and has never acknowledged you and the revelation of your mercy, yet I have always known you. And these believers know without any doubt that you sent me and I have made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them overwhelming their heart and I may be in them. Praise God. Now, another verse of scripture that truly helped me, and it truly helped me understand exactly why also um, <laughs> the apostle transitioned, was because this is written in Psalm 139, verses 1 through 16, and the Amplified, I will share it. And this truly, truly makes it crystal clear. And it says, Lord, you have searched me thoroughly and have known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up my entire life, everything I do. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and you are intimately acquainted in all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue still unspoken. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before, and you have placed your hand upon me. Such infinite knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high above me. I cannot reach it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, the nether world, the place of the dead, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, 
and your right hand will take hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the night will be the only light around me, even the darkness is not dark to you and conceals nothing from you. But the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. For you formed my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I give thanks and praise to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being formed in secret and intricately and skillfully formed as if embroidered with many colors in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance and in your book were all written the days that were appointed for me when as yet there was not one of them even taken shape. So when I read this, and whenever I read this, and anyone who has ever had someone transition, and you've struggled with that. And I know as, you know, born again, spirit-filled believers, we're never supposed to say anything that isn't perfect in line with the word. But that's not being totally truthful or authentic. So I share with you, if you've ever had that happen, if it's ever just made you really sad, or if you've ever wondered, well, why did this person have to leave? It's right here in verse 16. Well, actually the whole chapter, but verse 16 just puts it right out there. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance and in your book were, in your book were all written the days that were appointed for me when as yet there was not one of them even taking shape. So when I read this and really could, it became Rhema to me and I truly, 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 truly got it. Then it was well with my soul that on February 12th, 2021, that was the day that the apostle was to leave because all of his days were appointed for him when as yet there was not one of them even taking shape. And then I could just rejoice and just praise God that I had the privilege to still walk this earth at the same time he did. And then, yes, I could look at his photos. Yes, I could listen to all of his teaching over and over, and I'll never get enough of hearing him because it was a privilege to be here at the same time that he was here. So for that, I am forever blessed and grateful. So again, the word being the final authority will give you the answers that you need. And when you really are open to practicing his presence and allowing him to guide you, he will do just that. He'll guide you into that peace that you crave and that you need. Now, another verse of scripture that has always been a blessing to me, and this is why I share it, is John's Gospel, the 16th chapter and verse 33. This is Jesus speaking to us, but this is out of the Amplified Classic Edition. That's very important because it's the Classic Edition that explains it in this way. And this again is Jesus speaking. And he says, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. And the last verses of scripture <laughs> that I want to share with you are truly, um, truly, truly one of my favorites. And it just says it. There's nothing 
I can't explain it any further than it. And it is Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 35 through 39. Romans 8, verses 35 to 39. I will wait for you to get there so that you can follow along. And any translation that you have, I promise we will end up in the same place. I'm going to share it, however, out of the Amplified. And it says, starting with verse 35, Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written and forever remains written, for your sake, we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Praise God. Now I pray that this series has been a blessing to you as it has been to me. There is so much more to share regarding this subject matter. And the Holy Spirit has already given me the sequel title. And it will be revealed to you at the appointed time. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Thank you for watching. Know that I love you with the love of the Lord. And always, always remember that God still sits on the throne. The enemy has already been defeated. Jesus is Lord. And wherever you are, God is. Thanks for joining us. Our hope is that you received something that you can apply to your life and strengthen your faith. At Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, we believe that the Word of God is practical for everyday application. If you'd like to support the ministry with your tithe and offering, you can mail them to Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, 450 7th Avenue, Suite 2111, New York, New York, 10123. We now offer the convenience of text and online giving, one of the most secure ways to give. Try it now. Simply text East G from your smartphone to 28950 and follow the prompts. You can even specify a designation for your gift. Text East G for general donation, East T for tithe, or East O for offering. Each transaction needs to be its own individual text message. You can also visit our website, BrentrawChristianCenterEast.org, and click the Give tab to begin your experience. Set up recurring donations or give one-time gifts. This experience is easy to use, secure, and requires a one-time registration only. Giving the second time is even easier. Simply text EASTG to 28950 with all your information securely stored. We appreciate your continued support and stand in agreement with you for the manifold return in your life. Thanks again for watching. And remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. We would like you, our viewers and partners, to join us in honoring the legacy of the Apostle by making a donation to the Apostle Frederick K.C. Price Library. The library will be on the grounds of the Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California, and it will be open to the public. It will be a place of study, learning, and research, available for anyone desiring to further their knowledge and understanding of the Christian faith. Visitors will also have a chance to learn more about our founder and his impact on the body of Christ and the world at large. You can mail your donations to Crenshaw Christian Center, New York, 450 7th Avenue, Suite 2111, New York, New York, 10123. If you are giving by check, be sure to designate in the memo area, Apostles Library. 
If you have Crenshaw Christian Center envelopes, you can mark AL on the envelope. You can also donate via your smartphone by texting East AL to 28950 and follow the prompts. We thank you in advance for your support. And as always, we stand in agreement for the manifold return in your life.